figured out. So, did they change the line? Who, who was batting first yesterday? Was Lux on the – did he bat first yesterday? He did. Any lineup changes in the batting order? The batting order, they left it the same. I think, the, you know, obviously the pitchers have changed out for tonight. Uh, and Barrett's starting on the mound. They just have to play right now for the after. They can really make that switch without burning it. So. That's a shot. Uh oh. We'll call that, at this age, we'll call that an error. So. Would have been a nice catch, but definitely a playable ball for sure. We got a ball on the field here. So that is, uh, that is what the Astros are looking for here. So I think if they can get up on them here, you know, one of the things here is, is that you're able to determine. All right, fielder's choice. Nice job by Reed getting that lead out. He might have even had a chance to step on, step on first there and, and turn two. But uh, you definitely, if you have a choice, you'd rather get that lead out. And, and Colton made the right choice. I was just there, about to say the same. Yeah, two pitches in. Hey, but they're moving the ball here. And maybe, you know, at this level, if they can get some runs on the board as the visitors in the first inning, I think that if you look back, that's a high, 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 high. That's going to drop. That's going to drop. That's going to be an error. We didn't – left fielder's got to call that ball off. Charlie's back in the back trying to make a great play. Ball's over him. Tough play. No, they're not. They're not falling. They're coming out here to just swing away. So, I think if they can get some runs up here early, I think it's going to put a little pressure on the Red Sox. That's a strike called on the inside corner. One did a little research this morning and uh, called some ex-presidents of Post Oak, and they said that over the period in Pee Wee that they feel like the, the higher seed that picked visitor would win more times because of the ability to get up on the team. And, you know, that, that could play a part right here. I don't think. So JD wins up to bat with the bases loaded. I don't think this is how Johnny pa practiced it. it that's going to score one. That's going to score two. So, just like that, tied a turning. So, 2 0. Here, JD up to bat. JD, I think, has had three home runs. At least a couple on the season. He's, yeah, he's, he's letting good. loose right here. And is. that ball is banged off the wall. That's going to score another one. And there they go. Astros getting hot. Astros have gotten hot. Sam Barrett up to bat here. You know, once again, this is 18 out baseball. That one looked pretty good from here. It was a 
I'm, su I'm surprised Shane isn't showing bunt here. Charlie's smart enough to be able to crash to third to be able to draw the steel over because Bolin would crash up to home, but Charlie's a good enough player to know. That's a strike called. Alright. Really looked like it hit his foot there. I guess that didn't quite hit it. Alright, we're back in action now. So but JD went over to third. Wait a little technical difficulties there, partner. Sorry about that. Well now we've got everything going. I think we just need to little we'll tune up there. Yeah, two we'll outs, two outs. We got um, the only lefty, Sam Doros, for the Astros at the plate. And if there was a time to get fancy, Coach Hildreth might want to do it right here with JD. Yeah, try to get that. Here we go. Yeah, you want to get that runner at third across the plate any way you can. He took the first pitch. I would expect would have expected him to take a couple more, but took a cut at that one. You know, Jake Raby here has only faced six batters, thrown it 20 times, uh, giving up only three hits here. And I, I would say that's it was one hit. Yeah. JD right, had the big hit and a couple of errors there helped him out. If I'm Shane right here, I'm sending. Uh, JD on a steal. Boy. Right here. That's it. That's it. So Raby, Raby uh, takes care of Doros to get out of the uh, first inning. Red Sox are coming up to bat down 3 0. Like you said, that wasn't the way the Red Sox scripted it. And I don't know if the uh, Astros could hope, a lot, hope for a lot more than uh, 3 0 after one. We'll be right back. Mike check, testing one two. Hey, where's the volume? I know you should turn it down because when it's when we're off, it's it's. So we'll set up the, uh, the fielders for you for the Astros. Rocco Sandalachi is over at first. Benjamin Lux, second base. Peyton Luffler at short. J.D. Wynn at third base. In left, 
William Taylor. Center field is Odin Springmeyer. And over in right, Parker Hudson. And we are joined by our color man. Welcome back. Leon so was definitely one of the stars last night. Three hits. Nice plays in center field. Is that outside? Pr pretty good from here. We're gonna make it strike one. Leon was what? Three for three last night? At least. I think he even got up a fourth time. I'm not sure what happened on the fourth one. He started off three for three, I know. Let's go to the, let's go to the check. <laughs> Although there were no errors registered in last night's game. So anything? Three to three last night. Had two ribbies. Got on base by a walk. There you go. Yeah, counts three, one. Yeah. Be so the Red Sox are taking some pitches. So Johnny wants to get into down through baseline and throw the first gonna be not in time. Boy, he's so fast. He got no shot there. Good That's throw good. by Wynn. Good, good play to keep it down. Charlie had quite the game yesterday, didn't he, Forrest? You know he hit well. I think he was two for three. Um, but on, at, on the mound, on the mound, he was almost untouchable. So no, he had a great game. And Got to feel confident at the plate right now after last night. Yeah, he went two for three with a walk, knocked in three. Now that'll get Leon to second, maybe third. Johnny over here, home. Hildreth back behind the plate tonight. I think last night he had a bout with dysentery, but uh, looks better today. He just sat out an inning, right? He sat out an inning, uh, came back, and still played the rest of the game. I think he sat out the third or fourth inning last night. Uh, that's another pass ball, though, or wild pitch, rather. You know, Hildreth is quite the catcher back there, too, so. Yeah, it's a lot harder with this heat. It's much easier to catch when it's 75 as opposed to 95 like it is right now with that gear on. Yeah, it's no. about 100. 100 uh, They're a lot easier, too, when they... Um, don't bounce before the plate as well. No, that's yeah. I can't can't uh, put that one on the catcher. No. Yeah, th th those would be wild pitch, not. That's right. Ball. That's right. Exactly right. Now Charlie's going to walk, and Charlie is smart enough. I can see him just. I would have expected him to just stand in the middle there at that point. And they'll do it here in a second, maybe. Give uh, Nathan a chance to take off for home if they make an error throw. Shane's, uh, Shane and James are too smart. They're just going to let them pass all the way down there. You're going to have runners at second and third. Sure. No outs. You know, there's an old play at probably this age where they throw it down to the short shortstop who comes up and tries to go home. I've, I've seen it work about 10% of the time. Yeah, it'll. you know, if you've got a... a group of guys that are used to playing together like this shortstop and, and catcher are we might see it today we might see it I, I don't know I don't think we're gonna see it on the Red Sox game we could on the Red Sox side we might see it as the Astros are playing defense though Raby's a big boys we talked about last night Raby uh, last night went two for three as well no one for three as well um, batted in two with a ribby he hasn't hit a home run, I don't think, this season, but he's definitely a home run threat. That makes it. Is that down two and two? Sam, you said, was Gumby, right? You <laughs> said greatest flow. <laughs> he's up, up at the top of the list for sure. It's between him and uh, Grant. Another hard hit ball by the uh, Red Sox. He's going to score two. No, that's I don't know about you, Brian, but I've got the over for today, and it's looking pretty good right now. What is over and under here, Cowboy? It's a 16. I'm sorry, 15 and a half. 15 and a half is the, uh, is the line. Yeah, we got a, you know, when I was in college, we used to have a friend who lived in Chicago, and we used to call down there 
and he tells the wind, and so we'd bet on the over and under. <laughs> so if it was running out, and you know, bet on the uh, north side or south side? No, we were north siders. No, there we go. Boy, he Just got it. Get him right I'm there. I'm not sure why they didn't take off for home. They might get both of them here. Boy, that was Whoa. a mistake by the Red Sox. No, that was a heads-up play by the catcher is what that was. That was great play by James Hildreth. Throws a gun down there. Heads up by... And Charlie didn't take off. That's what surprised me. I think he would have gotten caught off. I think Boy. I think Leffler's arm's too strong. They call it Barnett baseball around here. Johnny <laughs> might call it Randolph baseball, but it's harder to do it at this age. Well, you just put the pressure on the other team, and the other team makes a play like they just did, and it costs you an out. And like we've talked about in a six-inning game, these outs are really important. So you don't want to give them up, especially with uh, a couple guys on base, and you're down, starting off down three runs, now down two. Will the beast goes down swinging. Yesterday it was two for three. And he was in a walk. Boy, the way the Red Sox are hitting, you just hate to get, give up anybody that's on base. And so Simon's up now. Simon's had the home run last night. Over. He's had a home run the last three games in the playoffs. We thought two, but it's three. Is that right? Yeah, it's three. Oh, boy. That one's off the dirt. So now the bases are clear. Unfortunately, there is no interference with the catcher, so... Um, you run into the umpire there? I missed the it. umpire there. So I guess he's part of the field. He is part of the field. I saw today I was at a, a uh, 14U baseball tournament, and I saw a team do one of the most disrespectful things ever. The catcher, they didn't like the calls. This was not kind of kids that would play at Post Oak. And the catcher jumped out of the way oh boy. so that they would throw it right at the umpire. They do not play that kind of baseball here at Post Oak Little. Boy, I, I don't know anybody that that's a that's a that's horrible. Yes, no. I hate hearing stories like that. Yep, it was in the last inning and they were losing and they threw him out of the tournament. <laughs> I'll just say that with the umpire being part of the field, some are easier to get around than others. That's a true statement. But luckily Dean's out here on the uh, third baseline, so he was working home plate last night well, for the uh, juniors game I saw. Uh, These guys are out here more than the players are. Yeah, Dean, Byron, Bill, and Josh are in the Black Force today, so we got the A team. So no one can complain about the umpires today. He's having a little trouble now. And here's the difference between today's game and yesterday's: that really, the, all the pitch counts are pretty much out the window. All these guys can go to 85 pitches, so we don't have to worry about 20 pitches or 35. Really, the, uh, it's all about when you want to switch a pitcher out, give him up for the game. You can't put him back in at this level. Uh, can you, I believe you can in the juniors, right? You can put you a pitcher can, yeah, back in. You can put a pitcher back in, but unfortunately, I think Barrett's probably thrown here. He's got to be in the 30s by now. Well, he's thrown a bunch of them, what we would call a wild pitch. Hard hit ball, pass third baseman. We're going to be in the outfield. Bring in the run, make it three to two. So Streamy's one of these guys at the bottom of the order for the uh, or the second half of the order for the Red Sox that did a lot of damage last night. Three two here, runner on first and second. Young Henry Simons has a uh, sliding net, but <laughs> fails to understand that there's no head first slides allowed here at post up, right? Well, he could go back into the base head first, so I guess he's gonna. Try to get picked off at some point and go back to the base? Well, he could do one of those ollies like they do in skateboard. And as long as your feet go first, you can still reach over with your hand. I guess the you want, if you're trying to save those those fingers on your right hand, I guess that, that sliding glove. And if you see the major leaguers go up there, they all have it in their back pocket. I think that's what these guys want to uh -oh, okay. be when they grow up. So. Even at age 14, they uh, and like I said yesterday, after every time they bat, it looks like a yard sale before they go to the next thing, but Henry is known for, he's, he can do multiple backflips, and that's a shot. Toss up third, it is Woo. in time. That was a nice play by Wayne and, uh, and Luffer making that, and covering third, that's a good hustle. That was good baseball. 
So after two, or after one, three, two, Astros. A lot of traffic. Here at top of the second, Astros lead at 3-2 over the Red Sox. Raby on the mound for the Red Sox. You got any predictions after yesterday's performance? Uh, probably say Astros won with the score of a seven to six. You gonna give us a winner? Um, we'll let the game play out. Ask the spring bar to the plate. Start top the second. Jake Reeby on the mound. Once again, the coaches for the Astros, Shane Hildreth, Forrest Wynn, are loving their tank tops today. Cool breeze on the side with their uh, shave side mullets. And their mustaches are slowly but firmly blowing through this beautiful Sunday wind here. Yeah, those mustaches are filling in. It's, uh it's an unfortunate look. Some great mustaches back in the day. Probably Raleigh Fingers probably be the greatest mustache. Didn't I don't know. I kind of the, I kind of like the Dicky Thon. Shane is going for the Dicky Thon look. I think is what he's got. I kind of feel like. Uh, Philip Honor like had one, right? Forrest seems to me more like a Magnum PI kind of guy. <laughs> well, yeah. The Ray Ban the Ray Bans mustache combo. It's uh, screaming Magnum PI. I just heard a great story. And the sleeveless shirt. I think, right? Grant Smith up to bat. Probably didn't get much sleep. His brother's team won the juniors last night, and his parents hosted a party. Well, that's not a, that's a Saturday night. So, I called him El Flacco last night. It's Don Flacco. What's the translation for that, Brian? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Is that a, you know? I think it's a compliment. I'm not sure what it is. We'll have to ask Forrest. Bosque between, the, uh, between innings. Forrest is from uh, Temple Belton area. I'm from Tyler. You know, we didn't have this kind of baseball where we were growing up. We were lucky to have grass. We definitely didn't have facilities like this out here at Post Oak. I actually played Little League in Katy. You did? I played for Katy National Little League. 
you drive all the way or what? <laughs> no. We live there. I didn't go to high school there. We live there that at this age, so. Oh. I played for one of our district competitors. Of course, is a great soccer player. Not sure about great. Like a better soccer coach than a soccer player. The great country lane, Janelle, up here at the bat. He had a hit last night, didn't he? You know, he had a great pitch last night. He had a one pitch out in an important situation. Got this team out of a jam, so they brought him in late when his teammates were out of pitches and came in through one pitch, got a pop-up. He also caught Charlie's ball that Charlie threw. I mean, Charlie hit out the center field and threw a gun to second. He did. He had a nice play out there. Once again, Charlie comes from a long line of post Oak alumni here. I know I saw Mark before the game. Mark is a uh, an, an avid uh, poker club player. He goes around to these poker clubs and he has this app that lets you know how he's all in the on the tables. It's kind of a, a very advanced 2022 sport that's to come about. We can only talk about that on the uh, Nevada broadcast of the No, show. I, no I, I, what I was leading into is, is that I think that, that goes down on three. So Rady's back in form, took care of the uh, middle of the order there. Well, what I was going to go to is is that, you know, there's that I don't think we're far away. We're paying college players. High school players are getting stuff. I think it's not a long time before there's... Little league contracts? No, I think oh. there's, there's going to be acceptable little league lines and, and gambling stations that allow to... I, I, I think the Little League of America soon will adopt that, at least probably by 2040. It's definitely a revenue generator. I mean, I, I think that's going to happen here one day. So, we're going to the top of second. Yeah, the uh, Astro made, Red Sox made quick work of the Astros there in the uh, second. They'll have... Uh, Let's see here. Bolin Delacondro Stieg up to bat. All right. And so Barrett, Barrett stayed on the mound for the Astros. I think they're going to see what they can get out of him, and they've got two or three potential arms ready to go behind Sam. You know, a, a, another another thing to point out here is is the Astros allow their pitchers in the major league to have uh, great flows. You know, but the Yankees and the Red Sox that is kind of a no no, right? Garrett Cole, it, when he was a Astros. that's right, he had to have that. He had much longer hair with the Astros. He was a UCLA guy. So he's a California guy. Liked his hair long, and I think you could have a mustache as a Yankee, but not hair that hits the collar of your uh, jersey is the rule. I think that's. I think that applies all. Th that does apply or doesn't apply for the Red Sox? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure about the Red Sox. They don't quite have as much of a winning tradition as the Yankees, so you can have those rules when you're the Yankees, and not many other teams can get away with it. I think there used to be a rule about tattoos, but I think that one's gone now. Yeah, tattoos are... Uh, we, we missed that era in time. I'm not, not upset about that. No, I'm not upset. I saw a lot of tattoos today at uh, <laughs> Katy National at the Perfect Game Tournament. As soon as you leave the beltway. Yes, there's not a lot of tattoos out here today, though, you know. It's a good thing. I haven't checked. That's why we love Post Oak and its community and all of its people out here for the love of the game. Supporting these kids. So Bowen's at, Bowen had some really nice plays. He did. At, uh, at third base last night. Really uh, made some important plays that kept the uh, Astros off the board. Kept those, run those runners off base. And he's up now. He's uh, one of the lefties. That would be that would be a balk, but there's no balks at, uh, at this level. Why is that for us? There's no leads. Oh. Closed bases. And that's the difference between Little League Baseball and Select Baseball. And the difference between being 12 and 13 next year, these guys have wide open bases, and pitchers have a lot more work to do. It's not just throwing strikes. you got to hold runners. you got to worry about whether you come set or not, and that's really out the window right now. I said the same thing yesterday. The difference between select baseball and little league baseball, that's a shot. Boy, Lux makes good play of that. Backhand it. Good footwork. I said yesterday, I said the difference between select baseball and little league baseball, if you lose in select 
select on Sunday, all you do is re-register and go play the next week. That's right. Out here, there's real pressure. Man. These kids are feeling real. Well, they've worked three months for this moment. These are the two teams that are left standing after uh, three. Ooh, man, I'm not nice shot. Go all the way to the wall. Sam DeLacondro going for two. What a hit. He smoked that ball right down the third baseline, just about a foot fair as it bounced right in front of us. JD almost made just the most remarkable play. I felt like it almost touched a little leather there. If that was a Marlins defense, that would have been a home run. <laughs> but they, at the Astros at this level, they keep him to a double. He's got room. Wow, nice play. Wow. You don't see many of those catches. You know, especially... Uh, Good job by Rocco. So now you've got the... Uh, the incline down from the, uh, the... They have to step down off of the uh, playing field to go catch one out of play is a good 45 degree grade. That's wow, Parsa, the, the, the number 12 batter, or no, number 11 batter. Here we go. The, uh, Boom! Oh, great play, How about great that? relay. Well done by Grant Smith in right. I think Ben Lux made the cut and a strike to James Hildreth to uh, make the play at home plate. It really wasn't even close. So, a so great hit by Parsa. That was uh, spoiled. Yeah, by a nice play. You know, you by the Astros. You could see Lux was well trained there. He turned the ball glove side on his throw and just threw an absolute dart to Hildreth. Was in a perfect position. Laid down the tag. Umpire Josh just flags him out. Well, and and each of these teams have one 11 year old. Ben Lux, Benny Lux on the Astros and Owen Ott for the Red Sox. And when Owen Ott gets healthy again and Ben coming, Benny Lux coming back, these guys get to play another year of Majors Baseball next year. They're the only two in the championship game, or Benny is really. Um, they're going to make some noise, I think, next year. It'll be fun to watch those guys. There was about eight guys drafted up this year, and these each of these players had each of these teams had one of the players. That's true. And a little known fact, because of that, those kids will probably also, well, Owen Ott will probably get to play three years as a junior. So because of his, because his of age. His age. Yeah. Now, the birthday cutoff is September 1st for Little League. And so for kids that maybe had a late birthday, a summer birthday, there's guys in, there are some of them that are in, uh, well, a couple of examples of guys in fourth and fifth grade. And most of the teams are made up of almost all sixth graders, but because of some early birthdays and parents deciding to hold their kids back so they can be they all at read the older end of their grade, they, uh, you got some fifth graders out here, and I think Owen's one of the only fourth graders in the league, although Bowen Landry, I believe, is also a fourth grader, and he won the home run derby. Well, his father had to have read Malcolm Gladwell's book, uh, The Outliers, about the November kids being on the hockey team. I, I felt like Jock Landry would have played that. He's, he's too, he comes from too good of baseball history to not have planned that. Well, I definitely think it gives you a little bit of extra time to grow. And, and uh, no, I think by the time he gets to high school, at this, at this rate, he's going to be 6'8 and about 280 pounds. And he, he made mincemeat out of us. That, but he'll have his time. No, so right he'll, be, he'll also be back in the majors next year, or we'd expect him to be if he plays. And both of those kids will be on the 11U All-Star team that will get kicked up here at the postseason. Yeah, in the next couple of days. But tonight, right now we've got yeah. the uh, Red Sox, right now Astros. William Taylor, who bats on the 11th spot, number one. William Taylor made a heck of a play last night in left field. One hops it, throws him out at second. That is the first wild pitch from Ravy, isn't it? You know, that was the first, definitely the first one that's a fa to me that, that was a fastball. He's had some curveballs that have been a little wild, but the, uh, the fastball, that one definitely got away from him a little bit. In for a strike. One and one there. Color man took a break here for a minute. It's one and two. I was corrected yesterday. Johnny corrected me. I was saying Charlie was at 55. He said he sits around 61, touches 60, four, five, six, seven. What kind of speed do you think Ravy's bringing here tonight? 
way, it's hard to tell. Rapey definitely pitches downhill a little more than Charlie does, but I'm not sure he throws any harder. I, I think if, if we could, if, I'll see if we can put a gun on it during the game today and see what the uh, what they're getting back there. He's definitely throwing a little harder than uh, Barrett. Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. I think the velocity there. I think he's living around 58 here. That ball's moving right there. Oh. William Taylor was a great frog, <laughs> coached by some great people. <laughs> we didn't win a lot of games, but we sure did have fun. Well, he's won some games this season. He has won. made up for it. Oh, that was a little low. That brings it to a full 32. Edward James, ah. as I was told one time. I ha we had an umpire in a game, and he, every uh, every count was a different football player from okay. Indianapolis. Oh, I got it now. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. So it's impossible to have a Tony Dorsett. set. I don't know the Indianapolis players well enough. You can't get the 3-3. Three, three. That would be a uh, strikeout. Right. So Parker uh -oh. Hudson, boy, that was a pass ball. William was kind of taking his time and almost had to pay for it. Shane over here on the third base line should be yelling at his first base coach, <laughs> not paying attention there. These kids at this age, they need to be constantly reminded of what to do next. Well, there's no reason to be ever standing still on the base when that ball, as it crosses home plate, you should bounce off the base. And I'm not seeing the Astros doing that right now. He goes down swinging there. That brings up the top of the lineup, right? So Lux is up. He can definitely put the ball in place. So they've got an opportunity here with one out to, uh, to extend their lead. They're up 3-2. Lux normally hits a little gapper. Quick hands. Got That's a little right. brother as well. Doesn't strike out very much. There it is. That ball. Whoa. He's going to drop. Leong changed his mind about oh. halfway to the ball. He switches places with him. They go 4 2 here. There was the. Uh, that was a ball that was misplayed by Nathan Young. He made so many great plays this season, and that one he was a little indecisive as he was coming in to make the play. Backed off, and, uh, and then it bounced past him. So. Kind of the worst of both worlds for the uh, center fielder for the Red Sox there. So a 4-2 lead now for the Astros. He'll get that. Jack he does not. Oh There's Leon. Wow. That's the Leon we know right there. Wow, I was just about to say Jimmy Jack is not feeling sick today as he smokes one to center with an unbelievable play. And he makes it look easy. Golly, we talked about last night how much speed he had. <laughs> and William Taylor, I guess, knew because he didn't even move. That would be Lux on second. That's true. Lux is a Lux is a catcher, so he's obviously smart. He didn't he didn't even take a step off the base, or maybe Shane stopped him. I'm not sure. So we nice play by Nathan Leon. We got a good breeze out here. Leffler has got power. He gets a curveball, strike one. I I don't see them throwing one down the. He called that one a ball. It must have been a little up or outside. It's hard to tell from here. Yeah, he did. He threw him a little jump there. Peyton is strong as an ox here. Outside, I just have a feeling. Boy, I'd be tempted just to put him on right here. You got first base yeah. open. You got two outs. What good does it do? He might be pitching around him a little bit. I think. Oh, Peyton goes for it. Cardinal send for a kid to takes his hand off the bat. Got to keep both hands on the bat. Peyton seems much more under control today. When Peyton's happy, Peyton is a great baseball player. 31 here. I'm not sure who's 31 for the Colts? Uh, is there a cornerback? Somebody that wears 31? We're gonna Aaron to, Glenn? I don't know. We're going to have to stay with like the Cowboys or the Crimson Tide or something. Charlie's going to make. Oh, nice play by Randolph. Just beats him by half a step. Pulisino makes the catch at first and wraps up the uh, top of the third inning. Well... 4-2 here. So Leong let one get away from him and then made up for it on the very next play, a play that a ball that probably should have been a hit. He turns into an out and holds the runner at second. So the Astros get one. 
So let, but, uh, let, don't let's help them describe. We've, we've got a good crowd here that came out here on a Sunday to watch these teams. Absolutely. The stands, look, the stands are full. The stands. fence is filling up. Yeah. So tell me about all the coaches, uh, the dugout dads, and the Astros. So let's see. Over there with the Astros... I'm surprised not to see Mark Janelle over there. Mark's a... Uh, well, Court Leffler. Peyton's, Peyton's dad coached a couple years. Um, Three boys out here. Definitely, and had one that um, made it the championship. I think they won the championship last night. And, and then Scott Hudson. But, who, but uh, Court, or Peyton, comes from some incredible athletic stock, right? Well, his mom was a Division One tennis player. And Court was, a, you know, just an amazing uh, wrestler, I understand. I haven't wrestled him myself, no. but I've heard that. I've heard about that. Yeah, they, they didn't. Have you may have. No, they didn't have wrestling in Tyler either. Okay. No, they didn't have wrestling. Scott Hudson, he's uh, he's a fraternity brother of uh, Hilder. So of Shane's. Yeah. So Hilder's probably accustomed to yelling. He's familiar at with him. Yeah. I'm not sure who's older. Yeah. So Leon's back up to bat. He's a obviously the dangerous leadoff hitter for the Red Sox. He gets the ball in the outfield. He will fly. Hits at the infield, he's going to fly. <laughs> he may bunt. Uh, I don't see Look that. how deep JD is right here. Got a deep third baseman playing deep. I'd be tempted to. I put one down right here. If they can throw him a strike. So Barrett, coming into the third inning, steer pitching. He's gone 41 pitches through 11. The flow is working. Hard hit ball down to shortstop. Would have been a nice play if Peyton could have gloved it. Yeah. You at least want to knock that down and give yourself a chance to make the play. I'm not Especially quite sure. with the top of the order up here. I, I think Peyton could have made that play. He definitely has the arm for it. That one had a little bit of a high hop. Charlie Randolph up to bat and does what he does. And right the up the middle. Boy, what a play. Leon goes to third. No throw. Who is in center field to make that play? Oden Springmeyer. Oh, that was great athleticism. I believe. Great athleticism. Charlie is just rock solid. Just he knew what he was, he was looking to hit yeah, there. I he mean, didn't, wasn't taking pitches. I mean, I bet you if you look at the spray chart, which we'll look at in a minute, I bet you can put all the dots within a, a small area. He just hits it right up the gap every single time. Well, the Red Sox are like the Marlins and the Pirates. They keep their spray charts private. They didn't publish them for everybody else to see like the uh, Cardinals did this year. Oh, I, I, I got to see yours. It didn't really make a darn bit of difference, though. And uh, just so you're aware, I've never even logged on to Game Changers, so I don't <laughs> even know how to make something <laughs> private or public. So. <laughs> Somebody did for the Marlins this season. And that was a great Hunter Sage. So it's second and third now. The prodigy of uh, Johnny Randolph. Yeah, they tend to trade places each year. Yeah, this is Johnny's year. Yeah, they they just kind of look the same, you know. Hunter, Hunter has better hair. I know, but they're both lawyers, tall, hardworking. <laughs> uh oh, that's a strike. Uh, oh, well, bases uh -oh. are juiced. Here we go. Forty-five pitches. Chain's coming out to the mound. So we've Guns got the pugilist. Out. The pugilist is at the plate. Wilcox Turner. Wildebeest, as they used to call him back in the day. Wilcox might be small in stature, but he plays football, and he is not afraid to lay a lick on someone. And I promise you right here, he wants to lay a lick and get those bases runners moving around. With two sisters, you have to be pretty tough. Well, his father's tough as nails. His father was a great all all city or maybe all state? I, think he was def I know he's all district. He, he, uh, he's he got pictures oh, yeah. well, I've, of himself. I've, he's shown me before. Oh, I've, I've sat and looked at the whole uh, the whole book there. His wife is on Style Files. Like, every time I see her, I feel like that she should be in People magazine. I'm not even sure what that is. Yeah, no, she, she's on it today. It's it's styling today. Oh. So no right. outs. They leave him in. What do you think about that? You know? I guess they're feeling pretty confident in Sam. He has only allowed two runs now. 
I think at this I think at this position you go in there and tell him just to pitch for a little contact and let the defense side turn too. They really don't have an overpowering pitcher on the team other than Leffler. So if they throw anybody else, it's, it's going to be another finesse guy like Sam. Okay, that's still that fly. He should drop they it. They called it. It's an infield fly. I'm surprised Peyton didn't drop it on purpose. That, that would be the thing to do. That is the thing to do. But that would be not just a heads-up play, but a really gutsy play, especially with no outs and the bases loaded. Well, no, because if he can drop it right in his feet, he can potentially get these guys out if they try to run. Whew. There goes Henry again. So it's a guy you don't want to see up with the bases loaded. You don't have anywhere to put Henry Simons right now, and they just threw this. Looked like a strike right down the middle, and he ripped it down the third baseline foul. Hit it out of the other. Had it hit it out of the minors field. He's batting, Johnny told me, like 750-something here in the playoffs. He's got three dingers in a row. Henry's got a smile on his face. If you see one go out, you're probably going to see a backflip. <laughs> That's nice one. play. Oh, wow. my goodness. Oh, oh he had to make the tag. He had to make the tag there because he uh, got the, the force out in front of uh, – he made the force out on Randolph. And so the tag had to be had to lay the tag down there. It wasn't just a force play at home anymore once that third base was tagged. So the ball gets past Hilliard. It looked like a good throw, but that's a lot of traffic to deal with at yeah, the same time. Yeah, he, he played first baseman. I, I'm, that's pretty technical to be able to catch that. That takes high baseball IQ to have known that. With one out, though, I would have been tempted to go across the diamond to first base, although Henry's a pretty fast runner, so it's going to be tough to get him. I say pretty fast. He's a really good runner. You know, the average baseball fan here at Post Oak that uh, is driven over from a club probably <laughs> would have known that rule. Would you agree, Forrest? I think that's right, but it makes it a little easier. He definitely had the opportunity just to stand on home plate there. It's the order of the outs that matters yes. in situations like that, so it could be a little... I've sat in many stands or in many dugouts and heard many fans. Oh. Boy, they are just hitting the ball so hard, Red Sox. Boy, if he hadn't, oh boy. Uh-oh, here They're going to have go. a chance to get here it out go. here. You got to run at him. Go back. You got to run at him. Oh, out of he the can't baseline. run out of the baseline. Oh, no, he didn't call him for run out of the baseline. He said he stayed close enough. The rule is two feet boy. each side. That's boy, that the rule. He's, uh, he's uh, and he said six feet, I think. No, he said Byron says three feet. It's three on each side, but it's actually two. But at Post Oak, we are limber with the rules. Well, we have four umps today, so hopefully we get this right. Not sure what the right call is, but I think we have enough umps to figure it out. And we'll see. Well, it looked like he, to me, more than three feet out of the baseline either way. I know who knows the rules. He's Two over or three there. yards. Johnny Randolph time. has the rules memorized in his book, but they're going to call him. Byron is not going to have it overturned. Dean's going to agree with him. Bill's going to agree with him. And guess what? The Red Sox get a second life here, and the red game is tied 4-4. Brings up Streeby. Men on the corners. Two outs. Sam's looking a little flustered on the mound, and I would be too. Calls it to the head means he's going to throw it probably back to the pitcher. Ah, that probably would have been a little bit. You know, top of the zone. At the beginning of the year in January, there's a lot of uh, coaches that put together this during a tryout these amazing spreadsheets. That's going to get us play. out of the ending. But anyway, the, these coaches, when we have these crowds, they put these amazing spreadsheets together. And these two guys who are in the championship games have to have spent the most time on their spreadsheets. Would you agree? And the only one that's going to give them a run for their money is Scott Goforth. Yeah, so but the coach of the athletics probably sold his spreadsheet to these guys so they could check their facts. But um, I would agree, the, as, far as, spent, as far as the uh, time spent and effort, there's no doubt these two coaches are top of the list. 
Yeah, these two really guys <laughs> care more. Yes, they than anybody out here. Definitely, or as much to, as. Yeah, I, I, it's hard for me to even know how to use Excel, more or less, to do some of the things that these kids have done. I mean, it is money ball out here, and they have assembled kids that I did not think would ever hit the ball that are just smashing the ball up and down the line. Well, and they're coaching them up too. I mean, you take guys that that uh, at the beginning of the season just three months ago had a lot of strikeouts. Maybe some ground outs, and they are putting the ball in, not just in play, but they're putting the ball in the outfield on a consistent basis. And I tell you, you know, we're sitting here 4-4. We might not hit the over, what did we say, 15 and a half? You said 16 and 16 a half. 16 and a half. But we, we're, I got we're halfway there. Yeah, we, we are halfway there. Almost. Yes. Um, hey, Rock Roxbury, the great lines maker. Um, Billy Walters would say he had, had to lay a little money to be able to move the line, but I think he got the line right on the target. We'll see. As they start, if we have to switch any of these pitchers out, it'll definitely, uh, I think, we'll see a couple more runs come across home plate. Oh. Ravy's still in here for the uh, Red Sox. We'll check his pitch count. Yeah, but, you know, m most of these coaches, you know, th there's a great coach who's doubled up, great Chris Hutchison, who's won three world championships. <laughs> and uh, he, I think he ranks the players in uh, A, B, and C, or maybe A, B, and C, and D. And I think the key is to be able to tear in a C ranker into a B and a B into an A and when you do that that's where you wind up being the championship. That's exactly right and you, you got really have to give it to these guys too especially on the uh, Red Sox side losing the guy with the highest or one of the highest batting averages on the team that's a consistent left side of the infield player and third pitcher is out for the Red Sox he's right a now. He's pitcher, probably. I would say he's going to, I would say he's in front of, Raby, Raby and, and Charlie are 1-2 for the Red Sox with Ott. Raby's definitely, if he's throwing downhill like he is today, he's got a lot of, uh, he's, a, he's a valuable pitcher to have out there. Yeah, they definitely have a pretty good 1-2-3, I'll give it, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, they're stallions. And they, they just made a big good. change in the field. They've got uh, Charlie Randolph behind home plate, Nathan Leong at third base. So what the they're looking for here, they're looking for strikeouts. They're not expecting as many balls to be put into play, so they're not that worried about no. they want they're playing catch. No, they're giving they're making Henry Simons available to available pitch. to pitch. That, that this does that too, which is exactly right. You nailed it. So Charlie's gonna man the plate back there. Not accustomed to his plate, but his place where he normally plays, but Looks like Charlie's got some new catcher's gear that fits perfectly. Either wash it with the red stuff or it's just a pink catch some pink catcher's gear. Oh, oh no. boy. Oh boy. Uh oh. Interference. Oh. They're gonna call. But he has to have gone to the next base to get the interference so he doesn't get an extra bag here. Did Reed get in his way? Is that what happened at that's first? What, that's what happened. So he should have just kept running, right? But I don't think he gets an extra base. I think he just gets the next base anyway. Okay. I think that's the way it works. Johnny could tell us, but we can't talk to him just yet. So that was the pop-up they were looking for, but uh, Andrew Stieg wasn't quite able to come up with it in right field. So we've got a man on second, no outs. Astros are one to break up this tie. J.D. Wynn jumps out of one, and... Did they have ice on the Astro yeah, side? Yeah, I think, I think he should have stand there and just let it hit him because then you had a man on first and second with no outs. He got all summer to recover. Yeah, he does. And he's tough, too. I think he wants to hit. Yeah. Home run hitter. So Charlie's going to be the athletic player and move around. I promise you Johnny just didn't think about this on the fly. He's had this one planned out. I, I doubt either of these coaches really slept last night. Again, you got one game. Might as well stay up all night and game plan, figure this stuff out. Boy, look. I guess he did out. not get a piece of that one. He did not. Strike out. Charlie doesn't catch it. Well, yeah, he, he would have he would have let us know if it was a foul ball, so it must have not hit the bat. There you go. That's a... Barrett stands in. That's a big... How's that scored? Pass that's a uh, boy. It looked catchable. It did look. Catchable. That's a that's you know. 
That's a pass ball. Don't worry about it too much. I wouldn't worry about it too much, but um, it's definitely something you wanted to uh, you wanted to avoid. You wanted to have Charlie back there to make those plays, and it just didn't work out that time. He's quite the athlete. So you got second and third now. JD takes second, uncontested. It's hard to be back there as a catcher. You know, it's it's just there's a lot of commotion and movement around. Both of my boys play back there, and I think it's taken them lots of years to feel comfortable back there. It takes months, maybe not years off your life, but definitely takes months, months and years off of your knees Especially at some point. Especially out here. And you're gassed at 90-something degrees out here, yeah. Yeah, it is hot. He just put on a heat suit to go sweat more. But you talk about a, a good way to learn the game and um, be involved in every single play. So any player that might be, you know, picking picking flowers in the outfield, put him at catcher, and he can't do that, right? So so I want to talk about her. You need somebody to stay focused, put them in catcher. They've got to pay attention back there, especially. Total Hard play for Charlie to make there. Yeah, that was Ravy a, bounces one. That was a wild pitch, I'll call that, that one. Good. Yeah, that that was a, a skipper, you know. Barrett could have hit it off the skip, and it's still able to be a, a hit, right? You can hit one off the bounce. You can hit it off the bounce. I don't think uh, either team would be too happy of swinging at those. It can happen, that's right. So first and third again for the White for the Astros and no outs. All right. I think here Sam Dora smoked one down the line. We're gonna call a first and third play. I would show bunt here at this moment, but they're not gonna do it. They're gonna let him swing and they're gonna steal. Red Sox are okay giving up that base. They do not want this run to score and give up a have a two run deficit. All we need all they all the Astros need is one on the ground. Five four here. Top of four. We didn't let our man talk over here. <laughs> this force and I are taking up all the time. Just swing and a miss. Be one and two count. He's, he's much better at the play-by-play. -play. He just doesn't know all the family history and color. Sam Doris attends uh, St. John's. Here we go. It's about to be. Oh, no. Oh, no. There is a good catch by Bola just keeping that play, keeping that ball in play. I'm not going to Doris does just enough there to put it in left field. Would have been a really nice play by Nathan Leon. He doesn't quite get there. Isn't able to glove it. You know, it's, it's a big difference coming from center field as opposed to shortstop because he's accustomed to coming up on the ball to where he had to go back on the ball. I think Johnny's going to rethink what he just did. Well, I didn't have. He can't switch him unless he switches the pitcher out. You've got to switch the pitcher to switch your field players at this level. Yes. Nathan had to come back off of that one eight eight maybe it's eight or nine inches, maybe a foot. Between. Yeah, that was that was a, that was a good bike ramp for us when we were young. You know? Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Um, so but now the, the uh, Red Sox are feeling a little bit right now, down two. Charlie plays, is accustomed to playing shortstop at all places. I, I would. So Raby doesn't have too many pitches left. Is he at 70 yet? Wow, Raby's seven. at 73, so he can only see a few more batters. Especially if they keep taking pitches like they have been. And they, they so then they have Leon and S looks like Simons might be next. They like you said they've got him out there in center field ready. And I don't know who they put it short. I guess they put Charlie back at short if Nathan goes into pitch. So I think they're going to go to Simons if uh, Raby runs out of pitches here. He will run out today. He comes back, you know, great. Johnny's, you know, probably could be compared to. You know, Belichick or a, a Saban. <laughs> Newt Rockney. Yeah, as it, as it comes to post up Little League coaches. Um, I guess for baseball, baseball terms like a Joe Torre or a Tony La Russa. You know, Bobby Valentine would be who I really <laughs> like, you know. Buck Showalter. Boy, no oh doubt Lord. about that one. That's, uh, that's going to clear the bases. Oh, Lord. So that was Odin Springmeyer, the center fielder that we've oh, been uh, oh. impressed by all game. That's why you got to hit your cut, man, right it was a, It a was a clean cut. double that he turned into a triple. And the Astros are playing a different ball game than they were yesterday. And that over is looking much better right now. 
Uh oh. Still no outs. Eight to four. Astros. We Big hit by Odin Springmeyer. We called a much. We knew that it was going to be a much different game today. It's hard to recreate a Charlie Randolph. Well, the way he pitched last night, that's exactly right. That's one of the best performances ever. Grant Smith up here. Raby comes back with two heaters. Got him 0-2. No out. Oh, that was quick. Boy. Oh, let's one go by. That's going to score another run. He and made it safe, safe, just barely. Oh, no, he's safe. That's fine. He turned to the outside, but as he came back to first and Reed didn't realize he'd wanted to tag him out there. Grant, uh, on the let's see, which one was that? A wild pitch or a pass ball? Whichever one. The uh, Grant Smith for the Astros makes it over to first. Charlie Janelle. Unfortunately, we don't have instant replay, so we can't make those kind of calls. But uh, if you want to send us a text and let us know, we didn't get to, we can, you can rewind a little bit on your Vipe. And let us know what you see. Your coverage brought here today by Vite Media. The Astros are sponsored by the great Hicks Davis Wynn, the great lawyer of uh, the first base coach. Now that's another, that would probably be a wild pitch right there. We're coming probably to the end of his pitching. Ravy's got his head down. Shane is, uh, that is, that's a great stop by Randolph. He was not probably expecting to have to get beat up like this back there, but he is giving it all he's got. There we go again. Yeah, that hits a pitch. So Charlie takes hit. first. So I guess we're looking at the sponsors here. If we need some legal help, we go to the Astros' first base coach and go to the uh, the stands for the Red Sox for all resources if you need to uh, need help finding some oil or gas. And then if you if you really need. Um, Orthodontist Mike Mazel out there <laughs> in center field. Everybody's orthodontist around here. And unfortunately, none of us were able to be smart enough to get a job at NCAP. <laughs> kind of the Goldman Sachs of Houston, per se. No, there's uh, plenty of guys out here that work for NCAP, and no, they're doing just fine. Yes. So it looks like Simons is taking the mound. Raby's done for the day, at least at pitcher. We'll see where they plug him in next. I don't. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. It looks like they've they've pulled Charlie Randolph either to give him a rest or uh, switch him out of that catcher's gear. But I'm not sure who their third catcher would be, especially with Owen Ott out. I know he caught a little bit for him this season. I don't. I can't think who their third catcher. And there's no way they're going to make Rady catch right now that I can imagine. So. Check the viewer ratings right here on Vibe Media. <laughs> the Nielsen ratings? Yeah. They're dropping like flies right now. God, I know. Bad color. That sign on the first base dugout from the Astros I, is new today. It's an, it looks like definitely an antique. I think it's a hybrid Astros Colt 45s. Armed and Dangerous has to be a reference back to the Colt 45s, isn't it? I don't know. I, I was or is it just the neighborhood right there around the Astrodome? crowd has begun to, uh... Oh, Astro's crowd especially. Yes. We can't see viewer ratings, so... It's either 15 or 16 people on right now, so... Yeah, that's probably true. If you need your son to ever... or son or daughter to ever have pictures taken, the great Matt Bennett, mrbco.com, is available. He takes pictures. The hardest working man in Post Oak. You see him around wearing a hat. He he feels to be, you know, have a, a military love. He's always has a green. You know, He's just trying to hide his camera. He wants to. Hat. He likes to hide it's the a camera. Fishing hat. Yeah. Well, the camera, the camouflage camera. I felt like it was at the Army Navy store. You know. It's a Tilly original. Uh, original Tilly. Yeah. Oh, my father-in-law had one of those. Fantastic hat. He had the big brim one, though. Well, I've got four of them. Oh, he has four of them. Yeah. But anyway, if you ever need any type of camera work, mrbco.com. Matt Bennett is your man. Matt 
produces unbelievable photos. He's the hardest working man out here in Post Oak. This is his part-time job. It's or is, this is his side gig. It's you know the, the demand. Now we're now we're brought to us by Byron. You know what happens on, on the rundown is that each time they throw the ball, it establishes a new. Yeah, it establishes a new uh, line of right three three uh, feet in between. So that's why I was so like. So it goes three to six. No, it just goes three. So okay. if he moves here, it's gonna be three here. Every time they oh. move, throw it here. Three from the run. Three from the Byron, every time. We're, we're that's getting the, the we're getting the rules. Uh, explanation here oh, okay. on, but he says it's three feet. We always were told it's two feet. We're also well, it's three from, and it sounds like it's three from. The, so it seems like it'd be impossible for the shortstop to ever tag him, right? If he can always be three feet from the shortstop or from the player with the ball. I don't think that's what he was saying. And, and Henry plops the first one. Did he? Did he hit William there? So Charlie ran off back at catcher. He was just taking a, a break, getting a drink of water. Owen, I'm sorry. Jake Raby steps in at shortstop. For the Red Sox. Up here. Wait. Tags him. And. No, he's safe. Oh, Bill's going to. That would have been a heck of a play. It Jake was a heck of a play. Jake Raby, after hard work, 82 pitches on the mound here on this sweltering May day, comes back and makes a heads up play. Parker Hudson now, up to that for the Astros, about to flip the order to the top of the lineup. Hudson has first and second one out. Henry's not normally a pitcher. He's kind of turned into a pitcher here recently. And he is hitting the zone here a little bit. Not much is going to phase Henry. So if there's ever a kid you want in this situation, Henry's your guy because he's going to get him fired up. So Parker's holding his own in there. I think he's the only player, at least in the majors, that goes to First Baptist School. There's a lot of Second Baptist kids out here, but he's the only one that goes to First. And the thing you have to watch right here, according to his coach, he leads the team in hit by pitch. So I don't think. Oh, pops infield it up. Infield fly. If he's smart, he drops the ball, but he doesn't. So infield fly. On infield fly, the runners are still live. The batter is out. You run at your own peril, but you still have to tag up. So the great uh, last year in the 12, we'll, we'll go back with the 12, when the great Thomas Smith playing <laughs> against Paraland made an unbelievable play where he dropped the ball and made an incredible double play in the sixth inning to take them pole to the seventh. Just heads up play, unbelievable baseball IQ. One of the great legends ever play here at pole. So Henry gets a first pitch strike, which is what you're looking for. Good stop by Charlie Randolph. Keeps that one. That was a wild pitch that was stopped. That is a, a saved error by Charlie. That Lux, who I believe is two for two today. Charlie yesterday didn't have to get dirty at all. All he was doing was just dealing. We have lost our power. We've lost internet. We've lost internet, so we're not going to be able to bring a game changer anymore. So we're going to go live off of memory. We'll just count the pitches, Brian. It's about 14. Forest. I got too much RAM in my memory, right? My brain right now. I'm that, but I'm going to try my hardest. Benjamin Lux here. Benny Lux got a little brother. He's a minors player, small in statue, but one of the greatest little players out here. Just great family. And moved over from Westview. They are baseball family here that we're lucky to have at Post Oak. Let's see what we can do here. Full count takes the walk. Not really close by Simons. Yeah, I think he was trying to throw something that was not similar. He, he's making motion of a curveball. So here we go, five run lead. The Astros can really pop it wide open here. And here is the man, the coach's son, about to, he's getting a pep talk from his dad. Jimmy Jack, James Hildreth is always 
this looks like a Ty Cobb type player. Just and I said earlier, yeah, I said earlier that Sam Duros is the only lefty. Hilted is definitely batting from the left side of the plate. He does he is. Got some bad information on my part. Hilders has been getting batting lessons from a great Coach D, who will be one of the memorial coaches, has really helped James Hildreth. He has great batting lessons. He teaches the kids to keep his hands way inside, be able to move the ball to the other side. So he's in a hitter's count right here. Two balls, no strikes. Hildreth is ready. Base is loaded. Oh, he can't get in there for a strike. That one was high. 3-0. Dad's not giving him the take sign. He's not. There's no way. Dad says hit. With two outs. Pitch was in there. Took a swing. Little. He was under the ball. Looks like a little bit. Coach Hildreth and James Hildreth wanted that ball to get hit. And so we're at three and one. Thirty-one. That's ball four. So we're at 10-4, uh, Astros. Totally Peyton, different Peyton ball Leffler game. up. Totally different ball game yesterday. We didn't even have really much of a ball game at this point yesterday. No, I think the fat lady was singing in the third inning last night. Yeah. Boy, that's uh, oh wow. William Taylor was not ready. He did not bounce off oh the base that's there. That's the second time. That's the second time he has been stone cold on pass ball. He wants to see Peyton hit. Yes, he does. But he'd rather, I sh you should want to see him hit from the dugout, not from third base. Although I'd be a little afraid if I were him. I'd be careful. He likes, Coach likes to uh, pull it. Coach Wynn are in the ready position, hands on the knees, just coaching their kids as hard as they can after just a whipping as my color man says, fat lady singing. <laughs> Early. Early fat lady singing. So he, he skies that in. one. Oh. Leong makes the play for the third out. Speaking of While they did get a couple across the plate, that they avoided disaster there. Henry Simons gets out. I think they just allowed two in that frame. Make it a 10-4. Red Sox coming to the bat in the bottom of the fourth. We're playing six, though. We're playing six at the time. There's no clock tonight. Pitch count's still there, but everybody can throw 85, so it really doesn't matter. As long as you're uh, not maxing out, you can use as many pitches as you want and have them throw as many pitches as you want until they get to 85. So we've got a, we're going to see probably another full hour of baseball. All right, we're going to take a break.
back live. We're back live in the, uh, the pitching change for the Red so uh, for the Astros. Looks like Rocco is taking them out. We just if got I'm mispronouncing it. I, I've always said Sandalachi. I'm not sure if that's right, so correct us. The other thing that just happened is, is that we just got an official radar gun by uh, a, a fan. By a fan. He makes an easy work. One pitch down to Bowen. And what we th what we thought was 65 and 60, we're about seven miles an hour to give it too much. So. so these guys are throwing high 50s. Yeah. And he was gunning them yesterday, so he gave us the. But Delacondro, Delacondro has been a hot bat despite the, uh, there was an out on a nice hit that he had earlier in the game. Roped one down the left field line. What do you think Johnny told him there at the break of the inning? Boy, I, I think you got to put guys on base. You can't, you don't need big hits, you need just traffic right now. Yeah. Six runs down, you got to make a dent in it here. you got to win this inning, which means scoring more than two runs. That way you're within reach. You can't score. Can't expect to score six right now, but you got to get some guys on base so these top of the order can come around and knock them in. Slow dribbler. Lux makes the easy play. Rocco is uh, three pitches. That's right. I've seen Johnny do it. I can't remember the exact year. I think the boys were six or seven years old. We were the Irish, and we came to back and won a major championship with a big comeback. Was that a local one, or was that a world championship that year? Oh, that was an SBMS. It was local. So so those are local they, games. They don't count. Yeah. Right. The only world championship were polls. So Andrew Stieg. What did you call him yesterday? What was his nickname? Oh, it's uh, it's the uh, Golden State. What, what is he, name? swing man, or... Uh, I'm not sure if he's a swing man or power forward. Wiggins. Wiggins, that's what you had it on yesterday. And you said he's played on John. He's been a part of Johnny's stable for many years. Uh, he, he's, he's, a consist he's consistently drafted by Johnny. And little known fact about Andrew, he's a big dinosaur fan. So. Like real dinosaurs? Well, I'm not sure. Dinos dinosaurs, are they real or not? Oh. Well, you know. He goes to all the games. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. D dinosaurs like at the Field Museum dinosaurs? Sure. Like Is there Spence? another kind? Like, Oh, I thought you meant like some minor league baseball team. No, no, no. The actual... He's a he's a aspiring paleontologist. I think that's what they do. No, he's watched, he's watched those Jurassic Park movies more than once. Well, Stegosaurus just takes first I've base. checked his report card. He makes great grades. So Steve on first base now. He's smart enough not to swing. He gets the traffic going for the Red Sox there. And again, Parsa comes up and Parsa's been hitting the ball. 98. How do you pick 98, you know, as a baseball He's number? just barely smaller than Aaron Judge. 99 minus 1. Got so you. Pretty much Aaron Judge up there. Strike one swing. And Takes you know, an Aaron Judge swing. A great thing about Aaron Judge that most people don't know, if you watch him, he swings and misses. He always grabs dirt, strikes it off, and drops it down. He's, he's learned as a young baseball player to shake it off and throw it away. I'm going to throw that one away. Yeah, he's probably to grab some dirt there. Swung at one almost above his head. So it needs to be a little more patient here. Andrew's not bouncing off of first base. Boy. Another chance for Lux. Makes the play. Lux has been a vacuum over there. He's definitely doing his job. Hadn't had to put any work at catcher today. You would expect he could be one of the guys that takes them out for the uh, Astros. But I think Rocco's going to try to finish this one out for the uh, Astros. The uh, the Sox got six innings, six outs left. That's right. It's going to be tough to get six runs and six outs. But they're back at the top of the lineup, right? That's exactly right. They just flipped the order, so uh, next up in the bottom of the fifth will be Nathan Leong, the speedster center fielder for the Red Sox. In great frustration or great excitement, the great Henry Simons just catapults one against the wall, I think, to fire himself up. We are uh, we are on the fence line with the great Dean. Dean's been here for almost 20 years. So how many feet do you get on that run down? You get three, you get two, three? Three. He doesn't get any three wider. Three each side. Three, three each so side. The line, so we're, we're talking about from the player or from the middle of the base? Reestablished. 
every there, time he turns. Th yeah, there is no, every there time is he no turns, baseline. He gets reestablished. The so line he steps is out, you know he gets still at three feet stop. So if he makes a big turn, that's where the line's is established. He's a nice little juke move. Impressive. Yes. So as Dean says, the, the reason that Henry was not out is that he pulled, I guess, the great, been a great Boston running back. I'm, I'm not sure about Boston, but um, there's really not many great running backs in Boston. I'm thinking that was more of a, uh, that was kind of a Barry Sanders type move, a football move on the, between that's second and third. Guy. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not, you know. Well, Wes Welker, maybe? Yeah, that's right, a video game. It was a video game type yeah, play. You push, game push, play. uh. So a, A, B, B, right, left, right, left, and that guy makes that spin move that Henry made on uh, down, on JD. Select, select, there you go. Contract, Somebody has teenagers. Or something. Is that what it was? something like that. A, B, A, B, select, select, start. So I think we may, if I be, it might be surprised if there's any pitching changes to the rest of the game. I think they're going to let these guys do it and see what happens at the plate. Both teams, I think, um, like the guys they have in. So you're saying Johnny could have gone to De Leon and said he chose to pull Nathan, Henry. Nathan, I think, would be his next go-to. I think, you know, he's he, – he, Henry's gone to be, got to be over 20 pitches, so he can't go back behind the plate. Because once you throw 20 pitches, you can't go catch again. It, no, he went past three innings, so definitely can't. No, you can come back and catch as long as you uh, as long as long you don't go over 20 pitches. You could actually come back. It's a, These are the, there's the strangest pitching catching rules. They're trying to watch out for the guy's arms, but there's some weird – um, they really penalize the catcher. They do. So we're told that's in the high 40s, low 50s. Oh boy! Henry catches one right back at him. He tries to make the play. Henry is the toughest child out. Here. <laughs> well, I would say Henry's a, a football player playing baseball. Um, he's a caveman, is what he is, and uh, this caveman. Oh boy, I might have been wrong in my pitching prediction. Yeah, this caveman might be hurt a little bit. He's gonna shake it off. I promise you. Is that his throwing foot? He is. He's not gonna be taken out of the game. So Simon's trying to walk it off. The other pitchers on this Red Sox team are going to be Nathan Leon, Henry Bolin. I think they could put Reed in in a pinch. But that's really it. Um, they, they I guess Wilcox, Wilcox could potentially, Wilcox Turner could potentially pitch for the Red Sox. So Henry's going to Henry's going to fight some more. But uh, Johnny took a big gamble by taking Henry out from behind the plate. Charlie had a shortstop. You got to take some of these gambles. You got JD Wynn now at the plate. JD's made some big plays at third so far tonight or today for the uh, Astros. Has a chance at the plate to extend this lead. They're up six, looking for more. JD and Henry are great friends, and Henry with a smile. Little known fact: <laughs> JD's mother and I grew up together in Tyler, Texas, as young children. Is that Katie Tony? Katie Tony is her name. Strike on the outside corner. So Rocco's over at first. JD, who tends to pull the ball, has got to be at this at this with this 10-4 <coughs> score. He's got to be thinking about putting one over the fence right here. He's got a couple this season. He's got his friend pitching to him. I don't think Henry's going to give him one to hit out, but JD's definitely going to try. Just got some rules clarification from the difference in what the pass balls were and wild pitches. And we're in a tough position right here. We don't have a bird's eye view of this game. But JD takes ball four there. And uh, no outs, two on. Astros looking to extend the lead. Sam Barrett with the flow. Dumby, you called him. I, yeah, that's, that's what his free teammates call him, I think. So and he's looking to keep the uh, trophy at the Barrett household. There, that's a nice hit right there. Oh, nice play. Stands for a double play. And oh, clean Ray double Ray play Ray by Raby. 
Brady's Beautiful. A great place. Just locking down the shortstop. That was a great play. Boy, that was effortless. So you still have Sandalachi on third now, but two out. Sam Doros, one of the lefties for the uh, Astros. And you've got to take a pitch here and hope that they can get a pass ball and get Rocco across the plate if you're an Astros fan. There it is. You know, oh, Henry's what? smart enough. I think maybe he tried to bounce it off <laughs> the back of the wall, sort of like a dunk, you know, where they throw it off the backboard. Boy, he was in full So sprint. you're you're saying everybody else is playing checkers and he's playing chess. In his own mind. Okay. Yes. If he was bouncing it off to catch Rocco. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So Doros hits it to first base. We can't quite glove it. It bounces off the up there at first. Play. He's, gonna get he's part play. of the field. Oh, go, the ball went under the... Okay, so oh, it bounced off the ump. So it, that's not a pat. That's not a ball out of play. He's part of it, so that it has to remain there. He's one of the smaller parts of the field. Dean is one of the bigger parts of the field. So Springmeyer's up. Springmeyer crushed a ball earlier. He's done a great job in center field. You've got to give him some consideration for player of the game, despite the fact that he hasn't pitched. He's played great today. All of these guys are out here trying the hardest. Henry looks in. Outside. One and one. Now the... Springmeyer's grandfather is a wonderful... Grand, one of the wonderful grandparents to come out and attend all of their grandparents' families. My in-laws are some of the same. I have six grandkids and they attend every baseball game that's what makes Paul so great all of the fans have supported the grandparents definitely I'm sure they're looking for some shade today as hot as it is out here your father attends he, he drives in from out of town there's a lot of those you find a parking spot especially if you're retired what better we can look for any better than this, especially. Uh, That's what my father it's a, it's a says. very small window of time that you get to do this. That's what he says. What else would I rather be doing? <laughs> I think he might be right. He's not working on his list on Netflix. No, this is, uh, you know, some people call this the greatest show on turf. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Full count, two outs. Walked him. Boy, when they point to first like that, if, if you're watching on Vipe, it's hard to tell if that's a strike or if he's pointing to first. He pointed to first there. It's a walk. Springmeyer. So, Don Flacco. Grant Smith comes up to the plate. You know, I really like those umpires that make it really dramatic. You know? <laughs> I'm a naked gun. Yeah, I mean, just like, just do the whole thing, you know, like... I like it when it's a really obvious call. If it's a high pitch, tell me it's a high pitch. If it's outside, tell me it's outside. Grant the, Smith. Subtle, the subtle umpiring doesn't work for me. Grant Smith up to the bat here. You, you claimed yesterday one of the fastest kids on the field. Well, he's one of the... He's, well, yes. Well, heads up. Well, he just hammers one over here. He's way ahead of Henry on that one. The Red Sox need to get out of this or it could turn into a Two strikes race. on Grant. Henry's got to keep firing strikes here and see if Grant can put the next one in play. There you go. So Henry wins that one. 11-4, middle to fifth. Red Sox need to do some damage. Seven runs is a, it's a big lead for the Astros. I'd like to be in the dugout right now to hear uh, the great Jan Johnny Randolph <laughs> with this. Two, two innings left speech he's going to give them. I bet you it's legendary. Well, they've, got, they've got six outs. They just need to score a couple runs. Or at least one more one run per out. You can't give up those outs easily. And we're a couple runs from the over. So I'm looking for a couple runs from the Red Sox here. You know, Johnny's to definitely hit that over. a Hall of Fame coach. You know, this will probably put Shane into the Hall of Fame as well as one of the great coaches. Both of them have coached their sons. This is going to be the last game. For both of them. For both of them to ever coach their son in baseball. So I know it means a lot to them. Barring adoption. Bar, you know, that, that probably could happen with one of these kids. 
these parents or uh, dads. I guess there's something else that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> so Rocco's still out there for the Astros. James is back behind the uh, plate. We, we were just told that uh, our color is acceptable, but we've worked out the technical difficulties, but I think we're on par here. I advocated that uh, we, we reach out to the donors here and that this become <laughs> something that is done at every playoff game here at Post Oak. Just Still for really the regular season. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, <laughs> it's not like that we couldn't, you know, ask some of these people you know, I mean, let's just take it to another level. I mean, don't we want to be the best? I mean, if if, uh, if we get some volunteer, some high school students that are audiovisual experts to maybe come and help out on the on the uh, board. Oh no! It Fine. could be at yeah, every yeah. game. No, we could be at every game thing. Oh, you mean the color comments? I'm talking. No, I'm, I'm talking the working the board here. They're they're getting a, an education. They've got a resume, a little resume builder. No, I, I'm I'm more into uh, that pole steps up and hires bike for. Oh, there, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That was my suggestion. But let some interns, let some interns come in and, and give some of those high school kids some AV credit. I'll let the, I'll as let well. the company take care of that. I'm more into <laughs> the alumni stepping up and paying bike to be able to bring this wonderful broadcast to you on every game here at Post Up. So we have the very slippery Rocco Sandalachi pitching to Nathan Leong. It'll be interesting here. You got the top of the order. They're going to do damage. It really needs to be in this. Uh, from the, the bottom of the fifth. From the stretch, he kind of looks like a Glavin, you know? He's got great, you know, one of the great spot pitchers ever. Rocco is loose, I'll give you that. Yeah, he is smooth. He smiles up there on the mound. He's almost dancing around after every pitch. Pro move there. He scuffs the ball up a little can bit. Can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. Ooh. Throws it from the side arm there a little bit. Moving arm angles there, one and one, right? That's one and one. Shadows are uh, creeping in now. Boy, that was a close pitch. Two balls, one strike. Maybe a little up, maybe a little out. It was close. Nathan needs to get on base right here. You know, a tower up so these commentators can see much better view. <laughs> or have, might have to hire taller commentators. That would also do the trick. Yeah. Get Jamie Lee out here. He can do it from. Not us. No, know. no. We can barely see over the fence, both of us. Boy, that was a bottom of the zone. So 3-2. That might have been a post call right That was a, a, a pitcher's pitch? Did they call it a pitcher's pitch there? Definitely not a hitter's pitch. It was at the ankles. Call that a post oak call. <laughs> Oh, another one of those walks. It looks like a strikeout. No, I think he uses the long arm. Ah, right. there you go. Thank you. Uh -huh. And he uses the right arm when he does it on the strikeout. A Crimson Tide education paying off right there. Uh, yes. That, that's what so Charlie Randolph needs to get Nathan around. They need to get a couple of runs here and make this a baseball game. I think Charlie's going to let one fly right here. Heads and it. And just like that. He was way ahead of that one. The ball was hammered. Similar to what Grant Smith did a couple of pitches ago, took it to the foul or the uh, the screen here, just past third base. Except for that one, what about? A little harder hit. Oh, maybe 75 feet. Charlie's going to be a big kid. He's about to put all of his might into this one. Uh oh. Uh oh. The Taylor, Taylor makes the catch in left field. Just like Leong has to stay on first. It looked like Brantley out there, you know, just tracks it down. Boy, you, that's, you get that kind of play consistently out of your left fielder. It's hard to, to manufacture seven runs here with only five outs now to go. Yeah, unfortunately, all of the teams that I've ever coached, I can't coach them up that well. Just to show you how well Shane's done, he, is, he also puts in just tremendous amount of time to these kids. Every kid just loves playing for the Hildreths. I'm Miss just glad. Hildreth is just so fun. Okay. She's amazing. James Hildreth is just the nicest kid you ever want. Just want your kid to be just like him. 
And Shane is just the ultimate worksman. That's a word. Something like that. So Raby watches the ball come across the plate. Two balls, one strike. One out. Worksman could be a word. Worksman, it's, it's close. I mean, they said booyah, booyah and stuff like that. Yeah. Give it a little time. Raby's got to be looking to hit here. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Nice pitch by Sandra Lachey. Strip. Uh, Raby and sneaky pitch. They play together on a on a, a, a fall team together. Raby and Sandra Lachey on the yeah. Lions with him. I think they're on the they play cutters. cutters. There we go. Long time together. Coach Brown. Some of the great. At Eddie, Eddie's team? Yeah, you know, we should probably give some color to those guys. You know, Eddie, Archie, Reagan, Carter, Jesse. Jack? Jack. Mark Quinn. About a half dozen coaches that are approved yeah. out here. They have free They're office. out here constantly. Yeah, they've got free office space out here. <laughs> and uh, unlimited. Brings up a walk. Two men on, one out. Wilcox, I promise you, his teeth are gritting. He's about to hit one hard. You know what? Wilcox does not like to watch pitches. He likes to swing. So let's no. see what happens here with Rock Rocco. Doesn't want to let, let another guy on base. There we go. Uh oh. It's uh, down the uh -oh. line. Uh -oh. Fair. Uh -oh. but Just fair. Taylor, Taylor makes a beautiful play. God, Taylor is so Stand up good. double for Wilcox. I know why Taylor is so good. He was, he was coached by me at the Frog. <laughs> he overcame that oh, from three what, years ago. <laughs> four years ago. <laughs> that's what it is. All Despite right. being coached on the Frogs. And so now what we have. I'm calling it's it. It's what the Red Sox are looking for, I'm which is Henry it. Simons up with man on base. I am calling it. So, 11-5. Hey, 11-5. Bottom of the fifth. We called it, what was the over and under? Oh, the, we're, uh, we're right there. We're right there. Look, Henry's about to take us over. and the Champagne will flow. Oh, we're going to go to Tapas. <laughs> oh, oh he's behind, behind him. him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fans over here. They 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 wanted Brady home. Yeah, but you don't I think the yeah. great Johnny Randolph. Here. Well, and then you also are six behind, so every single run is important. You've got he's calm as a cucumber. Johnny is. <laughs> you know, he, he reminds me of a swan. You know, a swan at the top. You know, just or a duck. You know, they they seem so calm at the top, but they're just working so hard below the water. You know, just okay, paddling hard. All right, that's what Johnny is. He just seems so calm, but his mind's just moving. He's Definitely has Henry in the right spot right here. But he watches ball four. Didn't really have anything to swing at. Yeah, he, he walked. <laughs> Henry wants another pitch. He wa he <laughs> Henry did not want to walk. He, he was asking that was if he could have a mulligan. That was four. <laughs> he did not want to walk. So first baseman for the Red Sox up to bat, Reed Policino. Reed is, uh, only hits doubles. Only hits doubles. I feel the momentum changing a little bit. What do you think? Well, with six runs. Yeah, they need the momentum change to change. Red Sox do. And at very least, they need to get a couple of these guys across the plate. Good pitch by Rocco to start it off. In a minute. He's, I'm, I promise you he's going to put some runs on the board right here. He's going to create some chaos on the base path here in a minute. A little outside. One and one here. Johnny coaching him up there. Links and Turner on first base. He's so Hildreth, there and look pretty. Hildreth really just needs to squeeze it back there. Keep these. Two and one. 21, the great. Deion Sanders. Wow. Oh, did not play for the Colts. Did not play for the Colts. Was he always number 21 on every team? Yeah, uh, dual, dual sportsman, right? Oh, absolutely. Braves. He shoots pool as well. He does. Yes. He just lost his toe, you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, Which toe? He had amputated his toe because of a blood clot. Big toe? Um, I'll find that out for okay. you, of course. But I, I do know he had to He's going to lose a step, sure. Yeah, he definitely is going to lose a step. But, you know, he's... He's, he's coaching. Who's he coached for now? Jackson State. He's doing great stuff for... Big strikeout for Rocco. Big strikeout. Oh. So Streeby's coming up. Still, bases loaded. Now two outs. We're uh, They've got to scratch a couple out right here. Did the Red Sox that? do. They had the shift on a little bit in the outfield. And this is going to be... 
Nice play by Peyton. Boy. Benny Lux covering second base, and they did not put anybody else across. They got one. So we go from 11-4 to 11-5. We're now into the final inning of the game, barring extra innings. So the final three outs for each team, that was unless the Red there. Sox can tie it up. That was tough. Bases loaded with one out. Bases loaded with one out at this moment of the game. We're going to take a break for a minute. So Simon's back on the mound now, staying on the mound for the Red Sox. He needs to get a clean inning here to give his team a chance to come back in the bottom of the sixth. Charlie Janelle, country lane at the plate. The eruption of when the world champion is crowned. He throws it behind him there. But the eruption when the world champion is crowned here shortly at the end of this inning. Yeah, there's going to be the, the field will be stormed. The uh, confetti guns will go off, I think. I mean, you know, these guys have taken their their professional careers at stake with mustaches and cutting their hair. So far, the mustaches as of today. As last, last night, I wasn't sure about it. Right now, the mustaches are looking like a great move, and the mullet's even better. I'm very positive that Shane and uh, Forrest have a lot of you know, additional superstitions that they've got in play here. I'm just glad they just cut the sleeves off. Anything more than that would have been a little bit too much. I think they're, you know, that this they, this could warrant a tattoo. Oh. Shane oh. does lose bets. Yeah. Drove around with LSU license plates for a couple of years after losing a bet to Still uh, has it. No, he got rid of them just he, now. He did? Just now. Which is the most honorable thing a human could do. That just <laughs> speaks to the credibility of a Shane Hildreth and his honesty. That he didn't know about Joe Burrow when he made that bet. Nobody yeah, did. I mean, that just also shows you that the University of Texas has not been good at football in a long time. <laughs> so Henry's got a full count here. It's a little Janelle. So far they're sticking with him, and I guess they're going to stick with him. Charlie Janelle's. Infield got their hands on that. Now they're getting ready. Yeah, ball four. Not uh, close. Henry is, uh, Henry's might have gotten a little wild here. So Johnny's calling time. At the very least, he's going to calm Henry down here, but he might have uh, Nathan Leon come in from center field. Looks like Nathan's going to head in and uh, warm up. I, I can do that swan or duck or whatever that was calm on top. It's not as calm anymore, I don't think. Well, he's definitely paddling with those feet that are under the water. Yeah, he's No he's doubt. Maybe going against the current a little bit right now. Yeah. Johnny is Johnny is into his memory bank of what can I pull out here to make this happen. Six outs is a lot to work with. Three outs, not so much. Six okay. outs and... Uh, but if there was a man to be able to do it, it would probably be him. 
Well, the bottom of this Red Sox order has been doing it the play all the playoffs. They, they haven't let let up all season. So if anybody can go around and get on base <coughs> and uh, have a chance to score what six runs to tie it up and extend this game out, yeah, we're gonna they could, if they could chase Rocco somehow. Um, Another one of the great traditions is, is that all the umpires, you know, just wear pants in black, you know. But in Boston, a lot of times, some of them wear sport coats. You know, have you ever seen the guy behind the plate? Well, they got to stay a little warmer back there, right? Yeah, but, you know, I think you should adopt that here at Pole, too. If I, had a, if I were out there, I'd be in those light blue, that light blue uh, umpire gear. I wouldn't wear the black if I had a choice. Hey, we're constant gentlemen around here. You know? <laughs> we, we stick to tradition. There's a reason that they wear green. Oh, and the thing is, they're behind the plate. <coughs> it's with these guys, you know, 12, 11 and 12 year olds catching the ball. It's a dangerous spot to be in back there. They're going to catch one every couple games off the shoulder. One of the umps took one in the neck in one of our games earlier this season, and I'm surprised he stayed in to finish the rest of the game. It was a. Uh, they get beat up pretty bad. Yeah, last night in the, on the juniors game. Overworked and underpaid. Last night in the juniors game, a great, a great Gus Economides took one off of the C flap from Matthew Guyton, and it broke his helmet. So it's a dangerous game this baseball. So let's go through. Do you know who? So the juniors champion was the, the juniors, White Sox. The juniors champion was the White Sox. Beat the Cubs. Like, yes, in a, in a barn burner in two games. So, so they played a doubleheader. It's just like this. So the, the lo out of the losers bracket came the Cubs beat the White Sox in the first game, and then they came back the second time. And you saw two great athletes. And I saw one of the better catches I've ever seen in baseball. Matthew Guyton, I believe, was playing second base for the Cubs. The White Sox runner at first was stealing, so he broke as a second baseman to back up second base, but the ball was hit over the first baseman. Guyton turns around, makes a play behind the first baseman, go, diving guys. into the outfield. Amazing we'll play. Didn't quite get the win for the Cubs, but had a highlight real play. No outs. William Taylor up to great frog. Former go. former frog and uh, Astros left fielder. has made some great plays in the last couple of days. And it's a, it's Leong's it's looking for the strike zone right now. He's had quite a performance here. Got a lot of action out of there. Between Springmeyer, Taylor, Astros have a lockdown outfield. So the Pee Wee was won last night as well by uh, the commissioner. Of the majors. Of the majors, and Friedel as a, as a California Bruin. <laughs> UCLA Bruin. I California I Golden Bears, I think, right? They do have great gear. That uh, UCLA team, or at least the Pee Wee team, had some great gear. And did Drew win the uh, the coaches or the dad's hell run contest a couple weeks ago? I saw he had a few out of the park. Oh, no. I can't remember. But it was some guy who played in the pros. And oh. Just went to Texas, so That'll do it. Yeah, that's, yeah. But, uh. So Parker Hudson's up now. Two on, no out. But you know who did make it into the finals was the winner, the coach that won the uh, minors, and uh, Chris Hutchison. He he hit a couple dongs, wow, dingers, and his mighty muscles won last night. He became back-to-back -back world champs. That means the coaching does have something to do with it, or drafting, some one or the other. Is that why I've never done well? Probably so. But I've had a lot of fun. Which is a different different uh, line item. Uh oh. So that one gets past Charlie. That was a tough one to handle. Nathan seems to be kind of short-arming it a little bit, looking for the strike zone. Hudson is up. All right, it's an even count, 2-2 two -two now. Coach Raby, dugout dad here for the Red Sox, trying to pump up his left fielder. Uh, That's going to score one. Great play by Reed at, third, at first base. Henry makes the... Throw a little low, but gets the out. That's what you want. You'll know, trade runs for outs at this point. Just get out of this inning. You know they do that in the um, you know in college level when they're kind of down. They throw it off the dirt like that. So maybe that was playing. You know, as long as you don't short hop him, yeah. that's not a bad throw. You'd rather have it short than over the base where the guy doesn't have a chance. And as long as it's right not right there at his feet, it's actually not that hard to pick. So a great play by Reed at first base. And now at the top of the order, uh, Benjamin Lux is up. Laughing. Gets another RBI, oh and the ball no. is dropped. Oh no. So a little bit of a low throw by Ravy Reed. Wasn't able to handle it. 
I, I wouldn't call that a low throw. Tough, tough play. Red Sox, the inning is I extended. Think the, I think the pressure is come up high. Here comes Jimmy Jack. And, and that ball. That has a chance. Oh, no. off hit, the wall. Hit the gate Boy, in the I air. You his daddy is happy there. Another stand-up double right for the Astros. The ball gets past the middle infielders there, but Nathan has it. Look at and a Childress. big hit. Given the inch sign. <laughs> he, wanted a, he wanted a home run there. He, he would have he blasted off. He might have climbed the fence. <laughs> well, if there's a, there's a player on the Astros that can put it out, I guess, between J.D. Wynn and Leffel, they're coming up next. Uh-oh. Are we? Uh-oh. Boy. So I don't think... Peyton's going to take any more close pitches at this at bat. I'm not saying she's singing, but she might be getting her clothes on. She's warming up. Yes, she's warming up. Oh, he's waiting. Oh, the first one was a strike. So one more down here. Right. Yeah, that was why I said he wasn't going to watch any more. That first one they called him. No reason not to cut at least right here with an eight-run lead. Sitting back. Two ducks on the pond. Wins Barreling out. And goodbye. Foul ball by about 15 feet. 15 feet foul. But about 240 or 230, I would guess. It hit the uh, the fence in front of the apartment complex in left field. That's the Buffoni's on a short house. Hop. That's, that's uh, Amanda Buffoni's mother's house back there. <laughs> she gave her a little wake-up call. I'm not, you're on HCAD right now? No, Checking I just the, okay. know. They're okay. great people, too. She's coming in as... A great pole. She's going to run the women's auxiliary board next. I had no idea. Yeah. She's, she's Is that Sarah Snyder's job this year? Yeah. They, okay. They, they like to, they, you know, they were great junior leaguers, and so uh, they're taking So they're overqualified is what you're saying? Very much so. So Leffler now with two strikes. One ball, two strikes. Up. Oh. Clean, yep. clean base hit to the gap. Should be a double for Peyton. Definitely scores both runs. Peyton may go for three. No. Holds up at second. No reason to and Coach force Hildreth it. And Coach is feeling it now. He's feeling that mullet in the wind. Yes. So it's a 10-run mm -hmm. lead, 15-5. Astro is in control now. Charlie is uh, he's keened over. He's had a workout back there. So uh, Josh has a question, I guess. It's the home plate umpires checking with uh, – third base coach on something. We're going to have them mic'd up, mic'd up next year so we won't miss any of the action on the field. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. I, you know, there's been some great celebration parties over some world championships, but I promise you the Astros could maybe throw an amazing one here on the Sunday Monday. Could maybe. <laughs> I don't want to put Locking words. it down. I'll do, I will say the over is covered now. We're the covered. over is covered. Rock, Roxbury, the Sargon lines were hit. Our color commentator said it was seven to six. Ooh, he gets a little greedy there. It's a uh, ten-run game. This is really where the Ast or the Red Sox are missing Owen Ott. Uh, he yes. would have he would have come in after Raby and um, had a chance to slow this rally down. Bo Squared is just one of the great players that came out here. He'll be a legend forever. Uh-oh. Charlie's, Charlie's hurt behind the hurt plate. Charlie's behind the plate. What happened? I'm not sure. It must have been a bad hop. We couldn't see it from here. Richard Epley just said he's hosting the Astros after party. Epley Land is, uh, is a new place. It's might be as fun as, or more fun than Disneyland. I call it Epley Land. It's got more parking than Post Oak Little League. It's amazing. So Randolph's getting some attention. Hopefully we don't have to check to see if there's a doctor in the house. It looks like it's his, uh, maybe an elbow? It's an upper body injury, not the lower body. You're, you're a doctor, so, um, a couple degrees of separation from Oh, maybe your wife's a doctor. Radiologist. Uh -oh. Hey. 
It says DR in front of her name. Right. Something like that. She's not here, though. Okay, so Charlie goes to the dugout. Ball comes running out of the dugout. So if nothing else, they got to get somebody changed into catcher's gear. Charlie may be able to uh, rub some dirt on it and get back in there, but this late in the game. So David Ott is one of the uh, dugout dads for the Red Sox. Tenny is his mother. Owen is a fourth grader that is going to hopefully be ready for this postseason. But and fifth grade next year. More swagger than any young kid out here, right? That's right. I think that's how he hurt his elbow was that with that, some of that swagger. Yeah, he's got gear on gear, and you know he, he's one of those kids that every Evo shield and gear he's got it all. I hope we we hope Charlie's okay back there. We haven't had any signs. Definitely, especially as well as he pitched last night. You hate to say anything. We were in a we were injury in a, come up today. As we take a little break here, as they go put some water. Um, we were in a baseball game one time, at, and uh, the umpire had a heart attack in one of Bennett's games. Boy. It was quite the scene. It, it turned out to be a seizure, but uh, then the coaches decided to continue playing. Whew. Just a game, right? <clears throat> Not for some of them. They caught 401 kid rather than 401 k. Huh. Out here, it's all for fun, though, I guess right? it was the end of that game. The end of that game <laughs> must have been really important. <laughs> it's very important. Okay. Charlie's going to have to go out of the game. He's not going like to finish Wilcox the game. Wilcox comes into the game. He Charlie. was a full-time catcher two years ago, so he definitely knows what he's doing behind the plate. Played for the Blue Rocks, the COVID-shortened 2020 season. He's been on – he's been with, as we said last night, Langston and Johnny have coached together in sports. I said probably seven times. I'm probably right between multiple. He's sports. drafted him more than once. He definitely has drafted him more than once. He, he nicknamed him Wildebeest. I like to say he fell to him more he, than once. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think, I, I've always tried to get him. He reached for him more than once? I don't know. Something like somewhere in between. I don't even know the difference, but – so we're hearing from the uh, from the sideline reporter that uh, looks like an elbow, uh, not his throwing arm, but his left elbow took a looks like it must have taken a hop to hit that elbow. Cause he obviously didn't hurt it throwing. Catching is a dangerous spot back there. They, they get a lot of. Oh, You're telling me. What is that? I've caught for about 30 minutes and have a uh, huge bruise on my shoulder to show it didn't quite catch up with Tyler Elam's pitching the other day and he hit me twice. But yes. It was my fault. Got to catch these guys with catcher's mitts, not uh, we're, we're joined center by fielding gloves. Uh, Lauren Epley, who is the queen of... She's Epley. the co-host of the Astros After Party. Yes, Epley Land. She, she created Epley Land, which we said is more fun than Disneyland. Is it Saddlewood or Sandalwood? I never can remember. It's I on the right if you're going north, so that's the, the uh, east the side of the street. Oh, Lord. Here we go. So that one gets passed. Goes. I can't really hold that one against Wilcox, so that was a tough pitch to handle. I think the uh, I think the lady, I mean, it would be the greatest comeback ever in post oak history in the bottom of the six. Can Charlie come back in and hit? Yes. He it's can. just, yes. Um, I don't know. His elbow's okay. but um, And they're also nowhere close to him, although if they were going to score ten runs, they'd have to bat around, or just about bat around anyway. So, um or they have to have a royal flush. Something like that. Yeah, it's a... Uh, so we got two outs. Peyton Leflin moved around to third base. At the plate, J.D. Wynn, who could definitely put the barrel on the ball. Takes a high pitch. Ball one. Wilcox feeds it back to Nathan Leong. And as much as I'd like to say this run on third is important, they just want to get out of this inning and start to bat again. At this point, you want to get get in the dugout and try to rally. It just shows you how important pitching is at this level. And uh, they really do miss Owen Ott. And we hope he recovers quickly. As do we hope Charlie's over there is okay. We can't see. A little bit outside. Hopefully they got an ice pack on it. Let, it, uh, let him cool off a little bit. He was definitely putting some work in back there at catcher. So 
So that's a t nice play by Jake Raby to end the inning. And here we go. It's going to be a 10-run uh, deficit going into the bottom of the sixth, but if any team can uh, bat around, I think it's these Red Sox. 33 innings we've done color together here, <laughs> Forrest. I've had a good time. You know, uh, I'm glad I've got somebody here. Somebody here helping because... Uh, it's hard to talk to Casper, isn't it? Well, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These games are a ton of fun. It's a uh, we've got two hours, two hours in. The, s the shadows, the shadows are getting longer on the field. The Red Sox are definitely up against a wall here. Astros got to be feeling confident with a ten-run lead, and Rocco's still up there on the mound. I would say they're number, if not, you know, well, one of their two best pitchers is up there on the mound. They have a ton of confidence in him, and if he can do anything, he can throw strikes. So if James, they can get up James, there, they can give up a couple runs. James Hildreth comes on. Just head high, shoulders back, just confident. Grabs with the ball, just barehanded. Bring it on. Well, I mean, he hit one off the wall like that. Dad was so excited, wasn't he? Well, of course. Rocco slings it in there, sidearm. Tools and Astros cucumber. are ready to get to work. Tools a cucumber. Leffler has been a totally different kid today, hasn't he? Well, he's definitely, uh, you know, he's taken off last night. It was a tough outing as pitcher. He's come in to make some plays at short. He flushed it last night real fast today, didn't he? Well, and, and they knew they weren't going to have to face Charlie Randolph today. So he is it's shouting, a new, brand new game, a, brand new day. And he's being a leader out there. He's shouting, motivating. He's ready to go. And I know we thought it might be a high-scoring game, but I don't know if I thought anybody was going to score 15 more runs than, than the uh, Red Sox did last night. So Henry Bolin leading it off, left side of the plate. I don't think we're going to get any post-game interviews by uh, the coaches. We can try. We can try. We need one of those beautiful sideline reporters. <laughs> Where's the name? Aaron? The Aaron Andrews. Aaron Andrews. I think. Where's Aaron Andrews when we need her? Rocco takes his time, makes the play. And we only have two more outs. JD JD Wynn throws it around the horn for the Astros. Maybe well, Delacondro will get us started off with that hammering ball like he hit in the. They definitely need, early he's needs to put it in play right here. Rocco's dancing and smiling like we talked about earlier. The it's got to be a little bit tough to, to see the ball right now. The Astros. That's right. But the cameras are out. The kids are barreled up to the fences. Ready to rush the field. That's, of, that's the first loose pitch I've seen. Rocco throw. Yeah, Rocco's. Rocco's. Uh, I only missed all three there. You know they've got some some uh, some room to work with here. He doesn't even. Look, did he look at Johnny to take it to take sign? I would think you got to take care. We need runners on. You know, the Red Sox need runners on base. All right, puts it in there on him. Pounds the mitt there. So 31. Edward James. No, he was 32. Uh, my Edward James minus one or Dion plus 10. Yeah, right. And that nope. is a backspinner. Yeah. A lot of great golfers out here too. So which guys are the uh, which players are the golfers for the? Is JD a, uh, a golfer for the uh, Astros, or who are the uh, golfers on the Astros? I was more referring to the old men who talked oh. about how good they were at baseball at one time. Okay. You can always tell when you just throw a ball to one of these dads. You can know in a second if they really are telling the truth or not. That's a chopper. Leffler makes the play from shortstop. And I think she's at the door. She's here. She is here. Now, we need she's clarification. doing a mic test, I think, right now. We need clarification about the dinosaur comment from last time. You said that... Andrew Stieg. Yes. Um, I would say he's going to be one of those top 10% in his class guys. Okay. And um, I think more than once has chosen to do reports on dinosaurs when he didn't have to. He had a choice of everything. He's going to pick dinosaurs. Good. Archaeologist, is that what they're called? That's when you're studying the bones, I think. Okay. And he's going to make do of it. 
No. Oh, he, no. He's still alive. No. So you're saying there's a chance. They call it a two-out rally for a reason. Boy, you've got to have a really big 10-gallon rally cap on here if you're a Red Sox fan. Parsa steps in. Parsa steps in on the left side of the plate. He's ready to hit. Peyton felt a little pressure there, I think. The Velociraptor at first base, Andrew Wiggins, Stieg. And he pops off of the base as the ball crosses the plate, just like you should. A little step, but at least he's going in the right direction. The secondary? Didn't it's quite get really the secondary. It's more of an initial, an initial yeah. lead there. Yeah. Just Parsa, Parsa's looking for something to hit here. One strike. And the Astros have the Red Sox down to their last strike. I think we're going to get a celebration here in a second if the Astros are able to finish this one off. Oh, just out of the reach of Hildreth. Who would have that would have been a fun way to end it. Who would have laid out? Would that have been ironic or what? God, the wind is just perfect. It feels like air conditioning here. Yeah, if Parsi gets a hold of one here, it could extend the game. I'm hoping for more time. Takes a look. It's high. Josh is Close. not going to call him looking. He's too experienced. Of an one ball, to two strikes. He's not going to do it. Rocco wanted it. Josh is over there thinking that. Give him a chance. And that one's just foul. Just foul. Pars is staying alive. It's got to be easy just to check out on one of these at-bats when you're down 10 runs. And I don't know if anybody's expecting him to uh, do any damage here, but, he, boy, he's giving, up, giving uh, Rocco a fight. Here we go. It stays fair, just barely. And that's Ew, a what a and close play. Explain the scene here. Gloves flying in the air. Pitch Cats and dogs ever. living together. Unbelievable. World champions. Showers. Parents, girlfriends coming on. <laughs> Wives, girlfriends. Everything. The Red Sox, they don't need to hang their head. They fought. So if you Just think about it, they split this series 1-1. One, one. Yeah, but, it, it, but, it but the Red Sox fell to the Astros earlier in the playoffs in a one-run game that was just enough to send them into the loser's bracket. They flipped the script, and it could have been a completely different story, but the Red Sox lost that game about a week ago, and the Astros won it. So at least they got to play one another in that first round. It wasn't on somebody else. So Hey, the fans got what they wanted. They got a second game. Like Ernie Banks said, let's play two. <laughs> Well, so let's see. Unless we can chase somebody down for a, a post-game interview or get an injury report on Charlie Randolph, I think we're uh, Joe Buck. We're gonna call it a season. Joe Forrest has been fun. Troy. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and the Astros take the pole championship. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Mike. It was fun. All right.